Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pursuit. Jeff Hutchin here with John Sporov. Uh, good day, everybody. I hope you're having a good one out there. And uh, if you're driving to work, if you're on the treadmill today or just hanging out the house, thank you for taking just a few moments out of your day to spend some time with us. We're excited today. We've got a topic for you that we'd love to unpack with you. Before we get into that, I just want to quickly just uh, give a shout out to our title sponsor of today's episode, and that is our friends at Trinity Team Real Estate. Trinity. The time you're getting ready to list a house, and they're gonna they're gonna May take 9th, care of you. May 9th, Trinity Team is in formally engaged with me to help sell this house. Are you looking for a house in Westminster? A little plug, personal uh, <laughs> selfish <laughs> plug. But no, plugging them um, in particular. I mean, I we talk about them, and and certainly they. Um, uh, what do they say that they speak? Uh, the, the multiple lang languages, multiple languages, yeah, and, and bilingual. Uh, yeah, exactly. They speak real estate, and uh, and I got to see that up close and personal as as uh, Eric and uh, and one of his reps brokers met me at the house and uh, kind of walked through the house. And it was more than just yeah, maybe do this, that, and the other to make it marketable, but like talking about comps already. Mm -hmm. You know, they had already pulled up. It came in with a booklet already and, and yeah. sort of did their homework. Yeah. And this is where we think the range should be. Here's some of the. So it's just like, wow, wow. That's great. You know, it's not just like, hey, where do I sign and, and, you know, put a ad out there on Zillow for me? They actually, so far, man, it's been really, really good. Experience. So how do you reach them other than, you know, Eric Frisky? Trinity Team Real Estate Co. Dot com. Or, yeah, they can call me. Yeah. Just, just call me. Yeah. Just call me. call me and I'll connect you there. Well, good stuff, man. How you been? How things good. going? Good. Yeah, man. How about you? Love Spring it. football coming. Things are good. Yeah, football's here. And did, did this? And did the CU spring game already happen? That's this weekend. Exciting. Yeah, so you're fun. working it. Yeah. I just heard. For those of you outside of Colorado, this isn't going to mean anything to you. But I just heard for the first time in 27 years, Colorado has sold all season tickets. Sold out. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Well, you say it won't mean mean anything to, uh, to people outside of Colorado. I'm going to push back on that because you know this spring game. Uh, is being covered yeah. by ESPN yeah. nationally. I think the only spring game mm -hmm. is being covered nationally. It's sold out. That's exactly right. Yeah, and Great. so uh, and so, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna like it. You're gonna see it whether you want to or not if you're watching ESPN on Saturday. Okay, so. what Dion's got it going on. And, and speaking of faith, you know he is not he's not shy. <laughs> he's throwing it out there. I've already heard he's starting to get a little bit of lashback. From you know people saying, "Hey, he's sharing his faith." And the university basically, and I'm proud of them. They stood up and they made a public comment and they said, "Listen, this is called freedom of speech. He's not forcing anybody. He's not requiring anything of any, any of these student athletes. He's simply sharing the things for which he believes in, which is mm -hmm. freedom of speech." So, hey, hats off to University of Colorado. You know, so just to tee up this conversation, we're going to have about something really, really cool that we just learned about this morning. You and I. Um, it's interesting. So. Uh, my son, who's a um, a junior at CU, uh, a couple of his classes, he's he had the opportunity to go and take them remotely and through like the community college, mm -hmm. but CU, even though it's the same course and all mm -hmm. that, they won't accept any transfer credits in. Mm -hmm. So you have to take it through CU if you're going to get your degree through CU. Well, so he comes out, come comes home one day and he says, "Man." Uh, Deion Sanders getting hired at CU has helped us. And I said, why is that? And he says, well, now I can take two of my classes at, at, at the community college and, yeah. and transfer it in because of the thing around yeah. bringing in transfers. So the point is, in this really strange way, a decision made by the CU athletic department to take a risk and bring in this Deion Sanders, right, to make a dent and try to get some dubs of the football team, trickled its way down, and it impacted my pocketbook isn't that something so we it it's just a little segue and in a smaller less important metaphor around the trickle down effect of decisions that we make and you mm -hmm. sometimes never even know you know kind of the, the consequences good or bad of some of the decisions that we make yeah you know? so so let's let's start into the story and i'll, I'll set it up set i'll set it the up. story up but i want you to tell the details mm. so years ago so as you guys know that if you've listened to the pursuit for a while you know what john and i do and and we lead executives in the marketplace, and that's part of what John does. He does some other things as well, but uh, it's a discipleship. It's life coaching, whatever you want to call it. And uh, a couple of the executives that I've been working with for a long time uh, own their own company. They're partners in this company. And they said, hey, we want to take a stand as a company. We want to start this, uh, 
this this voluntary Bible study every every Wednesday morning, and it's going to be from you know eight o'clock to or eight thirty till till nine thirty kind of a thing. And would Hutch, would you lead it for us? Come up once a week, lead this on behalf of our staff. And there's about oh, I'd say fifteen twenty employees in this in this company. So I've been doing that for a long time, and occasionally. Uh, John would fill in for me or he'd come up with me and we'd do it together or whatever. You know, we just kind of, we kind of, you know, kind of go back and forth on this thing. And, and there's one in particular employee that, that you struck up a unique relationship with. Mm -hmm. And so now I'll let you take the story. And this, again, with the, under the conscious and the understanding of years ago, we made a decision to say yes to doing this, not exactly knowing the impact. Well, I mean, I appreciate you sharing that, um, but you said yes to this. Um, I just said a secondary yes after you said the initial yes um, to sort of coming alongside and, and helping out every once in a while, yeah. right? So I want to make that clear, that the first decision point in that tree was you personally saying yes to these guys. And by the way, we're not going to say their names. We're going to tip their hat, our hats to them right now because yeah. they're the reason that we have these microphones and this camera and all of that, right? Um, so, man, we will for ever be grateful uh, to them for that investment that they made in us. Um, that said, uh, yeah, there was a, an employee, and again, without sharing too much information, um, he had some issues in his life um, that real significant kind of obstacles to um, being a healthy person and with a healthy relationship with God. Uh, and one of the owners of the company said, um, hey, John, would you mind just peeling off some time and spending some time with this guy mm -hmm. right and and so we did and and so uh yeah you know the me going up there with you it was great to be around the 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 group and be in the bible study and so forth but primarily i was like okay as soon as this is over taking a walk with it and so we we had about two and a half years of walks mm -hmm. if you will right mm -hmm. pacing you know pacing through the neighborhood around this this uh office and some we got some good work done and and I'm going to say he and God got some good work done. I just asked some some questions and tried to lead him to water on some things, right? And and God just did a remarkable kind of transformation work mm -hmm. um, in him. And, uh, and it was really cool to see. So then fast forward to about uh, six six months ago, uh, a crisis that he dealt with. And I'm trying to be tread carefully here. And you jump in uh, if I'm beginning to share too many details. But um, essentially... Uh, a, a woman that he had a previous relationship with reached out to him in crisis because uh, two things. One, she's an alcoholic and her life hit rock bottom. Two, she's pregnant and wanted assistance financially with an abortion. Um, this young, this person that, uh, that, I, that I'm speaking of uh, decided, yes, he's going to help, but not just yeah, I'm going to help her with the alcoholism and, and try to get her clean and sober. Um, but I've got to do more than just simply not advise her not to get this abortion. He actually began to put up some obstacles and roadblocks toward that mm. happening, including, um, uh, and again, I feel like I'm, I'm starting to share too much. Let's just say that he created some roadblocks for that okay. to happen. Um, not anything unethical, but just mm -hmm. to say, listen, I'm not paying for it. And, um, but I'm going to make sure you're, you're fed, you're clothed, that you have a roof over your head. Right? And he was going to do everything within his power to keep that baby from being aborted. Yes. Okay. Everything in his power. That's, that's the best way to say it. And, uh, and so today, um, and by the way, she, in the last six months is a, a really remarkable turnaround. Um, she's sober. Um, and, uh, once she got past the that date in Colorado, I think it's 22 weeks. Mm -hmm. When beyond mm -hmm. that, you can't have a uh, an abortion unless it's a medical, you know, a, a threat to the mom, you know, um, medically. And so once she got past that and began to accept and embrace this idea of the pregnancy, and now like actually getting a little bit excited about it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you and I today. Why don't you tell them what we got? today yeah so i have the blue i'm sitting there and john sends me a text and, and basically says check this out and it's a picture of this little beautiful baby mm -hmm. a girl yeah little girl little baby girl beautiful mm -hmm. baby girl that has been born into this world mm -hmm. and we all just celebrated man because you know it, we're excited for Justin. we're excited for, obviously for this child and this mom that has made such an incredible decision um mm -hmm. and and it just and you brought up a point before we got on the air today you said you know it, this this is a result of a trigger of 
mm-hmm. you know, a domino effect of good decisions, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, you say yes to something and you don't know why. Yeah. And sometimes you never really even see the fruit of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's times where we'll say yes to helping somebody in crisis. We'll say yes to this, this menial task, or you might think it's a menial task. Like your church needs you to do something, you say yes to it, right? Or whatever. Or somebody asks you. All these things that we, we feel in our spirit, you know what? I don't really maybe feel like doing it, but I'm going to do it because it's the right thing to do. And you do it. And, and oftentimes, quite honestly, oftentimes we go through those situations and circumstances and we don't get to see the reward of sure. our obedience. But this is one of those rare moments where I think God kind of peels back the curtain just for a second and lets us connect some, you know, some dots and, and see these dominoes that fell that, that one yes, followed by a second yes, followed by another young man that was impacted to now an actual life being saved crazy there's nothing more yeah. significant than that and well and here's the most awesome thing about it well that is the most awesome thing about it but it is really really cool that today you when, when we're kind of catching up and and you said guess what you know i'm i'm, I'm stepping away from leading that by because the season is over yeah and you said man this guy's gonna step in and that guy's gonna step in and the same day that this that you made that decision yeah. and, and this is what happens. So it's like we both thought, yeah, the most loving thing you can do for these for these guys is to serve that that office, those those people in that office, incredible team that they've got there. Um, and it was about that, mm. but there was this narrative playing out that neither one of us, a storyline playing out that we, neither one of us had full yeah. awareness yeah. of. And like you just said, God sometimes will just open up. You know the curtains a little bit into the to see the complete purpose of yeah. what he's going to reveal to us in heaven. Say, hey, look real quick. Right. And, and to your point, and to your point where you just made it is that is in the other side of that coin is this. I think one of the cool moments in heaven when we see God is he's going to allow us to see the results of decisions we made, good decisions that we made, and how it impacted the life of another person that we wouldn't have otherwise known, yeah. right? Because of just whatever reason. And uh, and that that's going to be a, a neat moment, but man, then then it just flips everything back around again to me at least, and says, man, are you pressing in? Are you are you more about yourself and your flesh, or are mm-hmm. you willing to listen, have eyes to see and ears to hear, the things for which God is calling and commanding us to do, and even when you don't feel like it benefits you, and mm-hmm. maybe it's even an inconvenience but still having the courage and the obedience to be able to say yes when God called you to something, even though you may not know yeah. the impact. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, that, that's where the spotlight comes back to me is, okay, God showed you that, but how many times have I failed? Mm. How many times have I said no to something? And that same that same impact you know, occurs in a yeah. negative sense. And so it just emphasizes to me my importance of staying plugged in, man. It doesn't necessarily mean we need to say yes to everything. No, no. Which no. is not what you're saying. Right. Um, but you're right. There's there's things that we've said no to that's like, man, who knows what would have happened had I just said yes to that. And then there's things that we can all look back on, you know, that we said yes to. And often it involves like um, serving in the, in, the, uh, in the the nursery ministry at church. We're like, man. Oh my God, those why two years of how on earth did I, why every week, you know, whatever, right? I mean, maybe it's not that, but for somebody else, it's you know, certainly something where we look back on something that we said yes to. And to this point, you're like, it's kind of a waste of time. Not, nothing was really done, you know, that I could see, you know, yeah. benefit. But every once in a while, you know, if you serve in the youth, the you know, serve the youth group um, every other Wednesday or whatever, um, and that kid that was eight, that's 10, that's 12, that's 16, that's now 18, that shows up at your house and says, hey, man, thank you. You said this to me this one Wednesday. You and like, I oh, never, like, that. I said that? What are you talking about? And That's uh, very profound. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me write that down. That's good. <laughs> um, but, yeah, to your point, man, it's just, uh, you know, the, the blessing that God in his grace will give us. And so what is, uh, no surprise then, um, as you're stepping into, and I, I know that over the next weeks and months, we'll, we'll talk more about 
kind of the the thing that you're feeling a pull toward. Um, but it's got to, I'd imagine, um, let me ask you, give you courage to, in the yes that you're about to say to some things that might be a little bit scary. It does. You know, it's, I, I want to say something else before I get to that, because I think this is important because you brought it up and it sparked something inside of me. And you said that doesn't mean we are supposed to say yes to everything. And that's such a really, really good point on so many levels. And one of the reasons why we can't say yes to everything is because oftentimes we'll fill ourselves up with things that we say yes to that we're not necessarily supposed to be committing to. And then what that does is it steals our time and our attention away from the things for which God wants us to say yes to, right? And so now we're like, yeah, God, I'd love to do that, but I'm too busy doing this yeah. over here, right? And God's saying, I never called you to do that over there. <laughs> I've called you to this. Anyway, I just wanted yeah. to throw that in there. Jeez. But you know, you know, thinking so about true. thinking about gosh, just just connecting the dots and God affirming. And that that's what's so cool about the Lord. And I think I think a lot of people don't fully understand that is is one of the questions I get all the time, and I know you get this too, is is how do you hear the voice of the Lord? Mm -hmm. How do you know what God is calling you to? And I was talking to a good buddy and we were having this conversation, and he I'm gonna sh I'm gonna steal his quote, and he says, What he says to people when they say to him, How do you hear the voice of God? He says to him, you know, it sounds an awful lot like his word. Mm, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and the fact that, that we're, we're called to press into God's word and then his voice sounds a lot like his word, obviously, because he's never going to contradict the things that he stands yeah. for. But you know, we get to know God, uh, you know, by the spirit and by the word. Um, and, and it would be like for me to hear something either echoing I, I always say I don't know how to describe it when I hear him it's an echo inside me and it's not here it's an echo here um, that if there's something that when it makes its way from my heart to my brain I'm processing through it and it doesn't sound like God in the same way that if if you, I mean you know your dad unlike you and Mike unlike anybody else on this planet right um, and so if I said to you your dad told me this and it was just crazy, like there's just no way. And I was just making it up. You would know in a second. Mm -hmm. How? Mm -hmm. That's not my dad. Yeah, it's not his character. That's not his character. Yeah. It's, not, it's not who he's revealed himself to. doesn't sound like him. doesn't sound like him. Because why? You've spent time with yeah. him, right? And so you recognize him. That's why we know that without going to the degree of what they call pantheism, which is sort of, you know, God is in everything and everything is God. Yeah. So the thing, like that tree or that bush or whatever. But... um but the idea that I can that I can there's something about God that I can discover in in, in nature, and that He can speak to me through a tree absolutely yeah. can, R reminding me mm -hmm. about how that tree is rooted and even reminding me and back to John 15 says the abiding of the branch and the vine and all that He even used nature, yeah. and so there's this beautiful symphony of um, uh, of of His voices. creation yeah we yeah right through His creation yeah sure. yeah. So, you know, it's, um, it's fascinating because when I, the analogy I use, the, that I use with people oftentimes when it comes to hearing the voice of God, it, it's, it's like this. Let's say I met, let's say I met someone for the very first time and we have lunch together. We have a cup of coffee. Very first time I've ever met him. And then let's say, and I spend an hour with him. And then let's say a week later, my phone rings. I don't recognize the number. And I pick up the phone and I hear the voice. I may or may not recognize that voice. Sure. Right? Right. But I tell you what, when you call me, I don't need caller ID. Right. The minute, the second you start to speak, I know it's John. Right. And so I use that same example as it relates to hearing the voice of God. The more That's time good. you spend with him in his word, to your point, the more time you spend, the more familiar his voice becomes. So when he speaks, it breaks through the noise. It breaks through the yeah. noise. If you if we're in a big crowd, here's another analogy. We're in a big crowd, and and all of a sudden, and you're hearing voices, and people are yelling, having a party, and all of a sudden, I hear your voice yelling out. Yeah, it breaks through the noise. It does, and I go, I recognize that voice, and oh, it's John. Yeah, right. It's good and word. so, good word. I think yeah. that's where people struggle is is they don't they don't recognize the voice of God because they're not first spending time making themselves familiar with his voice. Yeah, that's so good. Um, and, you know, Jesus even said, I think it's in John 16 or 17, but it's, it's kind of in the beginning, the prelude to the end for him. And he was talking about the Holy Spirit, and he was telling Peter, 
Peter's having a hard time as he normally did handling Jesus leaving, right? And I'm not throwing stones at Peter. I, I, I so identify with Peter. Yeah. So identify with that guy. Um, and he's pushing back and, no, Lord, far be it from you and all the stuff. And I think this is right after he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Mm-hmm. That's not, that's the spirit of Satan. That's not something you want to hear coming from yeah. Jesus. Yeah. But then you, then he says later, by the way, on the, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. Like, whew, yeah. okay, I guess, I guess I'm safe. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, he said, he said, I've got so much more to say to you. So I've got to go away and I'm going to send the spirit because I have a lot more to say to you. Mm-hmm. And so it's just this very odd thing that he's essentially saying, I have to leave so that I can tell you more. Mm. And, and so the, the idea that, um, and it's weird. It's kind of with unintentionally segueing into the question I was going to ask you about a seemingly unrelated topic, but is this idea that, um, can we hear from God outside of the word? You know, a, a a person that's, and I'll just tee it up like this. And here's, I had a conversation with a um, double PhD theologian uh, actually last night and, and asked him this question because, you know, we often say, you know, that all truth is in scripture and scripture is all truth, right? And, and many people that, that almost deify the Holy Bible. And as some people said, uh, they don't see, they don't, they don't see the um, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as the Trinity. They think the Trinity is the Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Bible. Word, yeah, <laughs> right. And uh, and people that have that kind of a disposition will often point to Second Timothy three sixteen, that says, and you know it, but it, it says all Scripture is given by God. I'll just I, I had it teed up. I just want to make mm-hmm. sure that I I read it right. Um, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And so it's like all scripture is given for that for that purpose. And and my question to him was was this. Paul wrote that inside of a letter that he wrote to Timothy. Mm-hmm. So he wrote the letter, he licked the stamp, put it in the envelope, and off it goes, right? Um, 300 years, 400 years later, canonization of, of the Bible happened and this letter happened to be included in it. Mm -hmm. So when he says all scripture, he's not talking about the epistles, not talking about the gospels. What's he talking about? I think he's talking about how, how the Lord says, I'm going to write my law upon your hearts. Right. Whereas before he said, I I wrote the law on the tablets, but now I'm going to write my law in your hearts. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we, because we, you're right. We we have the tendency to think outside of that context. We think of well, the word's always been there, right? And so that you know, they had the word. They all they all were carrying their little Bibles around with them everywhere they went. No, right? Not so much. The beautiful thing to me though is because you would say, okay, but wait a minute, the revelation of Jesus. We needed that to have complete truth. Mm-hmm. Remember, Jesus is on page one of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Jesus is on every page of the mm-hmm. Torah. Mm-hmm. Right? He's there. And and the New Testament just brings the lens of, of um, uh, you know, of recognition. Puts flesh, yeah, fulfillment. Puts flesh on it, yeah, fulfillment of it. Um, actually, I just thought real quick. Let me go to Second Corinthians chapter five, because there's something interesting there. Um, in the first couple of verses, it says, um, uh, yeah, it's like Second Corinthians five two somewhere around there. Um, it's yeah, there's a lot of text here, and this is the wrong translation. But it, it says something in effect of that um, that we are living epistles mm-hmm. known and read of men, mm-hmm. not written on tablets of stone, as you're saying. That's mm-hmm. where that comes from, mm-hmm. on tablets of flesh, on the tablet of mm-hmm. the heart, right? And and so in the same way, and this may sound sacrilegious or heretical, and I'm willing to go there and just explore it. Um, in the same way that Paul had the inspiration to pen those words to Timothy, not just those words, but every word that he penned to Timothy and the churches in Ephesus and Corinth, Corinth and, and, and so on and so forth, um, that same inspiration, that same living Christ that was inside of him 
we've got as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's why when you sit down, it, it, I could sit, read the Bible and it could bring me encouragement. But if I'm going through something and you bring me encouragement by the Spirit of God, there's something that's alive in that in the same way that it's alive in the Scripture. Mm -hmm. Because you're carrying the presence of God. It's, and that's that revelation, right? It's that revelation that we receive. That's kind of what you're pressing into, totally, right? Totally, totally. Yeah. And, and he, here's what's, I'm going to take it even a step further. And, and you said, is it possible, is it, is it pos I'm going to rephrase your question, or maybe rephrase your question. You said, is it possible to hear the voice of God outside of Scripture? I'm going to ask another question. Is it possible to hear the voice of God without Holy Spirit within you? Hmm. No, the veil's there. The, you could hear it, but there's not going to be a revelation because he, he says the veil is there to this day in the ro reading of Moses, yeah. right? You, you know what, what's, what's bizarre to me is the things for which God is doing, right? And this is where I'll maybe push back a little bit on it because um, we're, we're hearing stories, right? We're hearing stories of Jesus appearing yes. uh, to, to, to Muslims. Muslims and, yeah. to, to, I'm sure not just Muslims. I'm sure there's others out, outside the faith that are that God is appearing to, that Jesus is appearing to in the flesh and, and meeting these people in visions and, and in, in some cases in literal meetings. Um, another example, you know, I was talking to a good buddy, just got back from Israel, as you know, and, and the fascinating thing is God is speaking just like you and I are talking right now to, to our Jewish brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. That, And I'll, I'm just being honest and transparent in front of you guys. That blew my paradigm. I mean, it blew my mind. I'm like, wait a minute, aren't? And I don't believe in replacement theology at all. Right. But the, it's the idea that wait a minute, God. Okay, I have Holy Spirit. I I recognize Jesus as Messiah. Therefore, I have this special, this special connection to God, where He's mm -hmm. going to speak to me through right. His Spirit that resides within me. And the thought that God is speaking as plain as you and I right now to our Jewish brother, brothers and sisters blew my mind. But then I start thinking, wait a minute. God can't be put in a box. You know, we can't frame him and say, God can do this, but God can't do that, right? Who are we to say that? He's God. He can do whatever the heck he chooses to do. It just it just blew my mind when I start thinking about that, how big God is yeah. and what he's capable of outside of what our theology might suggest. Yeah, we, it, we that does blow our minds. But then it's strange because we read the scripture. Because everything that there is to know about God, we see in the person of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. I don't need to know anything outside of what Jesus is to know God, right? He says, you see me, you see the Father, mm -hmm. right? And so that's my litmus test, by the way. Whenever, you know, I hear some crazy doctrine or whatever, it's like, if I can see that in the life of Christ, I'm good. Even if it's hard for me to swallow, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if it's not there, I'm like, ugh. And you, you're pointing at Leviticus and all that. I'm like, okay, in Leviticus 18, it also says that I'm going to hell because... I'm wearing cotton with denim. Mm -hmm. Look it up in 18. Yeah. But um, so so he's always my litmus test. But then I look at the life. Just watch the life of Christ. When you know the disciples said, "Jesus, aren't you hungry?" And he goes, "Not really. We're going to go get your food." And so off he goes. And what does he do? He goes and engages the Muslim. And you're you're he goes to speak to the person that you would not speak mm -hmm. to. The woman who was coming at the, mm -hmm. to the well at noon. The Samaritan. The yeah. Samaritan, right? And so, and he begins to engage her and have this conversation that would be like, holy smokes, man. I mean, he revealed stuff to her. They didn't even tell anybody else. And then back the disciples come and they're like, we got your bread. And he goes, fellas, you I'm not it. hungry. I, what do you mean you haven't eaten in two days? I have meat that you don't know of yeah. to do the will of whom he sent me, right? And so so he engages that, and then we hear about this, and we're, you know, we're like, How, what, really? And even up until the last moment of his life, he did things that he spoke to the one that shouldn't mm -hmm. be spoken to. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, the, the whole, uh, you know, the Facebook algorithm or whatever, the ads that are pop up, the videos and all this stuff, um, the algorithm... Uh, was was putting out um, th this clip by Alistair Begg over Easter. Uh, it's amazing how many people that I've talked to about this are like, "Oh, I saw that too." And uh, is this British pastor? I think he, I think maybe he's passed now. I think it's from the fifties or something. But um, but he uh, he said this. He said, "You wanna you wanna have your paradigm blown around your theology of, or your doctrine of theology that says." 
um, you know, you got to do this, that, and the other in order to, you know, you got to be baptized. You got to say the sinner's prayer and all that. He said, just look at the cross. Mm. And well, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. And he, and he, he said, the thief on the cross had never read no scripture. Never been no, baptized. Never, never been baptized. And had no idea about, um, you know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Like none of that stuff had done nothing up until that point. And he says, I'll see you in heaven. Close your eyes and I'll meet you in, yeah. in, a, in a split second. Yeah. And he said, and he, so he goes through this. It's really funny. I'll send it to you after. He goes through this thing and he's, you know, that, you know, in comes the thief into heaven and the angels are scratching their head like, how did you get here? Like, I'm confused as to why you're here. And his, his response brought me to tears, man, when it, but it was, it's hilarious, but it's, it's also just, it'll rip your heart out. He says, I don't know, man. He says, but the man on the middle cross said I could come. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's just it. Yeah. And it's like, that's, that's the Jesus that I know. That's, he's not laying down obstacles. Well, hold on. I know, you know, you did that, but you got to do one more thing to get to heaven. Yeah. He's like clearing the way and, and giving a shortcuts and what, just say, just come, just come to me, you yeah. know? And, uh, yeah, that, that, that hit me. That hit me today. So. Well, it's, you know, we kind of started, we started in this place of saying, um, you know, the power of the yes and continuing to be yeah. obedient to the things that God calls you to and instead of being motivated by the external, instead of being motivated by the, from, by the things that maybe would please our flesh, right? Like, like it's the pat on the back, man, John, you're so good. You're so great. Yeah. Instead of the rewards that the world would say we need to strive after, it's, it's more money, it's more power, it's more fame, it's all these things. I think it just what it's emphasized for me, and maybe the takeaway for us today is, is the power of obedience, the power of the yes, the yes for which God is calling you to say yes to which then forces us, requires us, guys, it requires us as followers of Christ. We don't have the excuse of busyness. You need to remove that, that word from your vocabulary. Busyness needs to be removed from your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And instead, I want to challenge you to replace it with the word purposeful. And we're called to be purposeful throughout our entire day. Not part of our day, not on Sundays, not just a fraction we're called to be purposeful. Jesus was purposeful in every step that he took. We're called to mirror his life. And in order to be purposeful, we have to be as good at saying no as we all are at saying yes. <laughs> so maybe that's the other side of the lesson is let's learn to start saying no. And because that'll free you to begin to say the things that we need to say yes to. And by the way, I'm firmly believe this. God is going to plug you into things that are going to give you life. Why? Because you're going to be using your gifting. You're going to be using your anointing. Oftentimes, if we're lucky enough, man, it aligns with our passions. And, uh, and, and even if we're even more blessed, God allows us to begin to see some of the fruit of our obedience this side of heaven. But, man, we're going to be rewarded like no other on the other side. So hopefully that's an encouragement for everybody. Today. And at the end of the day, it's not about us. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. The encouragement that you're going to go into to the rest of today with and me the rest of today and into the tomorrow with is a picture of that little baby. Amen. I'm going to put it on the, the video here. Yeah. It, uh, when we publish a YouTube, I'll edit it. You bet. On there. And just pray for this child. You, you, yeah. you don't need a name. You don't nope. need to know where they are. Just nope. pray. Pray for this child. That would be awesome. Because yeah. obviously God's got an amazing plan for this little girl. Man. Can't wait to see. He moved heaven yeah to make sure yeah, that that, that child was born on, on this planet i, I mean love you it. talk about destiny I holy smokes we can celebrate that today hey thank you for taking just a few moments out of your day today i hope this is a blessing and an encouragement go out there make it a great day we'll see you next time right here on the pursuit